It's the Daily Comedy News with your host, Mark Pyers. Join us for breaking headlines and all kinds of comedy shenanigans. Brought to you by the Beatsy. Ever wonder what it's like to live on Mars? Four people will find out? What are we talking about? Oh, goodness. It sounds like everything else. NASA looking for four people to live in a Mars simulator. You gonna simulate Mars like you simulated going to the moon? What? You guys know, right? Look at the footage. It's laughable, really. Like you could have created better CGI. They didn't have CGI back then, but better props for your little rinky-dink Kubrick film. You know, it was a good film. Kubrick did a good job. That's all I can say. He did a good job. He fooled you guys. <laughs> you know, right, Joanna? You think all got fooled with the Kubrick. Oh, goodness. You know, sometimes Kubrick does it. You know, he does it. So let's see. Ever wonder what it's like to live on Mars? Never. Never even thought about that one. You know, how about you? Have you, like, ever been at home? Like, hmm. You know, I wonder what it would be like if I wasn't on this amazing planet here with the beautiful sunset and the, and the mornings and you hear the birds. I, I wish I was on Mars. What's your name? Uh, my name is Elon Musk. I want to go to Mars. That's the only guy who's thinking about going to Mars is Elon Musk. You guys know it. The American people know it. Anyway... Now you can try out life on a red planet in a simulation run by NASA. NASA's doing a simula simulation? Hey, guys! Guys, I got a new one. Just bear with me for a second. Instead of pretending we're there and doing like the whole, hey, guys, look at us, we're on Mars. Let's tell them this time what we're doing. Like, guys, we're giving you a simulation of, of Mars, you know? And then like, we're kind of, you know, red pilling them in a way. Cause they're just like, yeah, cool. Like we can do it, let's go to Mars. Then when we hit them with the next one where we're like, guys, look, there's four of us actually on Mars. They're gonna believe it. What's that? Yeah, I know, they're idiots, right? That's what they're planning for, is us being idiots. <sighs> Simulation. Let's see, we have this guy over here. Up 60 minutes. Mars little helicopter on Mars, right? All right, we're not gonna watch it. Okay, so the space agency is looking for participants to live on a fake Mars for a full year to help them prepare for human exploration of the planet. Once they figure out the Van Allen belts, guys, and how they're gonna get humans through all the radiation and the heat that is generated in within the radiation belts of Van Allen. <laughs> no, they're gonna go to Mars. Uh, so let's see what happens here. This is the second of three missions, which will have four volunteers living in a 1,700 square foot Mars simulation. The mission's called Chapia for crew, health, and performance exploration analog take place in a 3D printed Mars habitat at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. The simulation called the Mars Dune Alpha simulates a future Mars habitat with separate areas for living and working. It includes four living quarters for each volunteer, a workspace, a medical station, lounge areas, and a galley food growing stations, you know, they're doing a Matt Damon. He's got a science out of it, you know? If you didn't see the film, you yeah, know, it was a pretty good film. That's the only time people thought about going to Mars and then they were like, I'm never going to Mars. Did you see what Matt Damon had to go through in order to like grow plants? <laughs> he had the science out of it. Uh, just like life on actual Mars, there will be limited resources. Volunteers in the simulation will go on simulated spacewalks in Mar on Mars. You're spacewalking it on Mars? Like, what did... So let me get this straight. Guys, you're going to Mars, and then we're going to put you in the International Space Station on Mars. So you're doing spacewalks from Mars. Why didn't you just figure out how to do it here, really, instead of pretending with green screen? Volunteers in simulation will go on simulation. We, we got that part. They will experience typical environmental stressors of the planet as well as equipment failures and delays in communications. The ground, <laughs> imagine the equipment failures. Guys, I can't breathe. What the f is going on? God, uh, the air intake valve stimulator is down. Does anybody know how to fix that? Harvey's in the, in the, the he's dropping a deuce right now. Harvey's the only guy who knows how to fix the stimulator. And we have no air. We're dying. Simulated death on the Mars 
you know, mission. You know that's one of them. They want to see how the body reacts to no oxygen, you know, and just the, the quick or potentially slow death. We, we don't really know yet. That's, again, this is part of the whole process of doing, you know, the clinical trials. Don't worry, guys. They'll be okay. Maybe. We're not really sure. You know, that's the whole point. We got to go and find out if they're going to be okay, you know. The ground mission will take place in the spring of 2025. And all of you that are interested... You know, you've got until April 2nd to apply, you know, so I know you can't wait. You're all leaving my feed right now. You're like, you know what, Mark? Thanks for the information. I'm going to get into the Mars mission. I can't wait for them to, you know, just cut off the oxygen because of the stimulator. Rod or whatever the hell the dude's name is, is dropping the douche. We're all dropping dead while he's dropping a douche. You know, I mean... You couldn't send a guy who could keep it in, you know, and just say, you know what, I'll drop one later just in case we have a stimulator issue. Oh, goodness. You know, this is the problem when you're dealing with human error. Uh, so, look, if you want to, just in order to qualify, you must be motivated. You have to be a U.S. citizen, not somebody who just decided to come across and just be like, you know what, it's wide open. I'm going to come over and they're giving me a stipend, putting me up at like the, the way, you know, what's it called again? It's a, it's a really, really nice posh hotel in New York City. They're putting me up there. Plus 2,200 bucks a month. I'm going. And then I'm also gonna do the Mars thing, because I don't need to, be, oh no, you do need to be a US citizen. Or a permanent resident between the ages of 30 and 55. So guys, I qualify. I'm, cons I'm considering it. Hold on, I'm not. <laughs> Let me just make a quick call and find out if I'm available. <clears throat> Hi, yeah, sweetie, listen, I'm here, I'm doing the show right now. Um, Mars, what do you think about it? You know, I was thinking about going for the second time. You know, I was stuck on Mars the first time, you know, and they, we made a movie about it, you know. Yeah, I know it was goofy. Every movie I make is goofy. Look, that's the point of stuck on Mars. I got stuck on a rocket, a SpaceX rocket that while I was doing a news report, all of a sudden, I'm on Mars for an hour and eight minutes. Yeah, it's on my YouTube channel. <laughs> I know. Yeah, stuck on Mars, guys. Stuck on Mars. Go watch it. Elon Musk has a cameo at the end when he saves me, sends another SpaceX rocket for me. Anyway, but what do you think about if I go again, but this time it's like a simulation vibe instead of doing a green screen movie, you know? No. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry, I forgot. Yeah, no. All right, love you, bye. I got three kids. Yeah, I can't. I, for, I forgot, you know, three kids. You know, when you got three kids, you can't do the Mars mission. You know, the simulation mission. Because no one's ever going to Mars, guys. You got to get the Van Allen belts figured out. We're going to send them through with aluminum foil crafts. You ever seen the Apollo mission? We should pull up photos. Guys, are we doing photos from the Apollo mission? <laughs> oh, goodness. You have to wonder. You have to start wondering if, if, if they're going to send the aluminum foil through again. You must be English and a non-smoker. They don't want any smoke in there. No vaping either. You guys, all you vapors out there are like, you know what, maybe I'll just bring extra vapes. I'll vape it out. You can't vape it out on the NASA Mars mission. A simulation, sorry. We're not really going. Not real, no, they're never going to Mars. Oh, well, I want to go on the real mission to Mars. <laughs> All right, buddy. You got like a cryogenic freezing deal going? Because that ain't happening for centuries. You know, all of a sudden the year 2743, about 20 years before Back to the Future, Mark, which is another one of my feature films. <sighs> you know, they're like, you know, we figured out the Van Allen belts. They send through, you got to see this rocket that they send through. The walls are 743 feet like wide. Like, the space for the person, because you can only send one person through, is like you got the guy in there like this, and the rest of it is a shell of steel and titanium. It's like a mile wide together in order to, to get through the Van Allen belt. But we did it, you know, 2743. <sighs> we got to Mars. That guy died, you know, like when he got through the belts, he was safe, but just like this, you know, being completely like stuck in there, no way to slide out. Because the only way out at the end is they, they crack the thing open and do one of these, and then you just like pull the guy out. But when they did, he was dead, you know? Just couldn't breathe in there, suffocated, you know? 
But we got through the belts. We, we did the research, checked out the science, the data. He was still breathing after the Van Allen belt, you know? So they just made the bigger rocket, you know, the one that was like a little, like a mile and quarter wide, but then the, the capsule inside for the person was twice as wide. So that guy made it through. That was a good, that was a good time, you know? We lost a lot of people in the process though. But where you, when you're reaching for the stars, people have to sacrifice their lives, you know? Applicants must also have experience working in STEM with a master's in engineering. Freaking A, guys. They, it would have been nice to know all of this stuff about having a master's in engineering before we did all of the other stuff, all the other comedy, you know, because not, there's not many people out there that can now apply for this job. I thought it was a wider base. I thought, like, you could just be a guy who's like, hey, I just finished high school. I don't really give up anymore. I'm just going to do a NASA Mars stimulation. <sighs> So you have to be a master at engineering, math, biology, or other sciences, and professional experience at least two years of doctoral work in those areas. What the frick are you paying? Let's get to brass tacks here. Volunteers can be compensated for the mission? Can be? What the fuck are you talking about, can be? You're sending someone onto a Mars environment for, two, for a year, and they can be compensated? How about we're gonna give you hazard pay? Yeah, you might not make it out of there. You know, Mars environment. We're pulling the air module again with the stimulator. <laughs> Remember that. And then the guy's in the dumper. He's pooping duping it. And you're just trying to figure out how you can get some air. You know, the one engineer you sent, the one guy who can, who can break down the code and, and get the air running again on our Mars simulator. And you just decide you know, to, to give him the runs at that time. So you're like, hmm, I got an idea, guys. Let's give the only engineer on the craft the crap food. So he spends the rest of his day in the bathroom. He's double decorating it. Everybody else in the ship, they're just losing air. You know, that's the challenge of the day. How many die? How many of them are able to conserve their air and do a Wim Hof? You hold your breath. <gasps> How long could you hold your breath? I can hold my breath for two minutes and 29 seconds. I've done it before. That's not even a joke. I did that. You guys want to hear this? This is the craziest story ever. So I'm in Florida at a pool. God rest my mother-in-law's soul. We just lost her two weeks ago. We used to go to visit them all the time in Florida. And so when we're there, I see this guy. Now, every year I see this guy in the pool. He's in the pool with weights on his shoulders. And he goes down and he's like taking like forever. He's underwater. Like my kids and I are like, this guy's, is he okay? He's in there for like three, four, five minutes without coming up for air. And I'm like, what in the world? And I noticed this one thing he did right before he'd go down. He'd go. <sighs> and he'd go down. And that's all he did. It's like five in and outs with his nose to his chest on, and five times and he would go down. And so, and I even just got a rush doing that. So he comes up one time and I'm like, what is going on? Like, how are you holding your breath? How are you staying underwater for that long? And so he told me that he's been practicing this for years and that it's, a, it's something he does for his health and it's a, he meditates. And I said, how do you do it? He goes, you have to find a way to t take your mind off the fact that you're underwater and that you're holding your breath. And I was like, what? He goes, yeah, for me, I, I um, I listened to music. So he had music in his ears, like some waterproof headphones or whatever. And so I'm thinking to myself, as a songwriter, I should be able to, while I'm doing this, sing one of my songs in my head while I'm underwater and therefore take my mind off of what I'm doing and hear the music. And so I did the breathing thing four or five times and I had my kids sit there and watch the clock when I started. And I started a song of mine called What A Day. And as I'm singing this song in my head, I realize I'm like into the second verse of it. And I held my breath as long as I possibly could. I'm like finally letting all the air out. And as I came up, my son goes two minutes, 29 seconds. And I could not believe I held my breath for the long. So I did it a few times, like two minutes, 14, but 229 was like, what the, and I never ever did that in my life. 
So the reality is our mind is insane. Our mind can do so much if we could direct it. And, and sometimes when we're in a state of fear, which is what you're doing when you're holding your breath, there's a bit of fear going on in your mind. Like, how long can I do this? I don't want to drown. But when you are in a different state of mind, and I was in this musical state of mind while I was underwater and I did that breathing thing, which allowed me to really fill up all my lungs, I made it to two minutes and 29 seconds. You know, I've heard a lot of people say you can actually retrain your mind to, to stay away from fear if you realize whenever you're about to embark on it, what's happening, and you step back and you take a breath, you listen to that song, whatever it is, in order for you to, to get level. Um, there's, there's so much truth to that. To me, this is what this show is in a way, is I come here after whatever's going on in the world and I could just be me for a little while. Laugh a little bit, see what, what kind of jokes come out, play some music, but more importantly, it's, it's that peace within all the hectic. And that, it's that holding your breath for two minutes and 29 seconds, you know, it's, it's very possible. And you wouldn't think it's possible. I can tell you, I think the longest I held my breath before that was about 35 seconds. I'm, I'm pretty sure I counted, because that was the other thing I did prior. I'd be like, one, two, hold my breath and hold my ears, because you, th you hold your nose and your ears, because that's the way you can make sure you don't get anything, whatever. And so I'm doing this, I'm like, hold my ears, I'm holding 35 seconds, maybe 37 seconds. I can't believe, still to this day, two minutes and 29 seconds. And my, my son was like, whoa. Uh, and I was like, man, I guess we could all do this. Now, I didn't do five minutes. This guy was under for five minutes. But again, he's been doing it for years. Something really interesting about that. I remember David Blaine did that as well as an endurance challenge to see how long he could hold his breath underwater. Um, it's possible, guys. We have this ability. It's within our mind, really. And it's actually a break free from the mind in order to accomplish this thing, these things. If you are within your mind, that is when you can't accomplish things. You have to somehow break out of your mind, break free of all the constraints, break free of every law that you know is within your mind and be in a different place. Some people say that's where the Akashic Records are. It's just basically this, this place of nothingness and everything at once. All information is there. Now, it's not a place you go and you're just opening up a, a, a file and there's the information. It's a place you go in your mind and you get the information without having to search. The query is within you and the answer just appears. It's what I've done for five years in a row every day. I show up in this space of nothingness and I find something. It's cool. I gotta tell you, it's one of my favorite things ever is that, you know, regardless of who finds this feed, I'm able to go to that place every single day. And that's why we call it the happy place when I play this song for you. Fortunately, I got my microphone on so I can't play it loud enough for people on TikTok to hear. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like on the way out the door, leave a comment and share. I'm live at 9 a.m. and after 9 p.m., so join us. This is the Mark Inspire Show.